Okay, we got more. You, you guys, you guys thought we were gonna stop. You thought we were ready for bed. No, and the fun never stops here at the. The, w goodness, I'm so tired. What is the name of this thing? Critical Decentralization Cluster. <laughs> the fun never stops here. Okay, next up, we've got Denis. He's going to be talking with us about Replicant, which um, I don't want, I mean, I don't want to say anything, but that, that little red Android logo is kind of cute, and it may give you a little bit of a hint as to what they do, but I'm going to let him explain that for himself. Um, let's go ahead and give Denis a hand. I actually don't think he's supposed to start in for five minutes, so maybe we can give him a hand for five minutes. I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll go ahead and give him. We'll go and give him the mic now. Uh, do I need a clicker? How do oh. I change that? Uh, uh, hi. So uh, Replicant is a fully free Android distribution. So the website is Replicant.us. We are on since uh, 2009. We are currently based on line address, and we have like uh, our all this, no, our current release is on, based on uh, Android 6. So unfortunately, there are no more security updates for two years now. So we are working on porting it on uh, Android 9. But the work is still uh, on progress because there is a lot of change between the two versions. So it supports about uh, 10 devices. We will see that later. And we have, uh, we have about like two people uh, working uh, full time. So it's like one person full time and two other half time. And a lot of contribution from the community that comes and go depending on the availability of time, basically. Uh, ah. So this is the device we support. They're quite old. It's like Galaxy S2, S3, uh, uh, Galaxy Nexus, Note 1, Note 2, and some tablets like uh, Galaxy Note 8.0 uh, and Galaxy Tab 2. Um, so it's a best effort. So we try to make it to make the basic work like I don't know uh, for smartphones, calls, uh, sounds, and things like that. But for instance, if the GPS doesn't work, we still support the device, and that's fine for us. This is how we can make it work, basically, with uh, being fully free software. So the issue is that, uh, like the distribution itself is fully free. This means we ship no binary blobs, nothing, nothing proprietary. But this doesn't mean that the hardware is OK or the software that is already in the hardware is OK. Uh, so, so this is a quote from Richard Stallman. We are going to look into it. Uh, so we have a lot of freedom issues. So this is a Galaxy S3. Uh, so this is a system on a chip. It's the, a chip with a main CPU, graphic card, SD card controller, a lot of stuff in the same chip, not necessarily everything. like. For instance, you have the Wi-Fi count somewhere here. I don't remember which chip. So some of the stuff is not in the same chip. And you have also, in this phone, a separate modem here. So it's another chip that communicates with a cell phone tower here. So if you, have a, you need to make a call, for instance, you uh, digit the number or something like that in the graphical user interface in Android. So that's run by a processor in this chip that asks the other chip that has its own OS and so on to do the call, to place the call. And you also have like other processor, for instance, in the SIM card. I think there is a talk here at uh, this CCC about uh, SIM cards. So yeah. And uh, the hardware architecture is interesting for uh, freedom, privacy, and so on. Because for instance, here, the, it's connected. The modem and the system on the chip are connected through something that looks like USB. It's a subset of USB. So this means that there is no shared memory, and the modem cannot attack the main CPU uh, through memory. It could maybe appear like a keyboard, but in this case, we will know about it, because the host, the, the main processor, control the USB reenumeration, so you cannot, like, uh, out of nowhere, appear like a keyboard, basically. Um, so a lot of freedom issues. So you have the network that know where you are, like uh, 10, 20 meters accuracy all the time when your phone is connected to the network. So this is part of the protocol. Uh, the modem firmware has it, 
has its own OS and it's uh, completely non-free. So we can trust it and we can change anything inside it. You have uh, many other non-free firmware like, uh, for instance, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, depending on the model, uh, video decoding acceleration, things like that. Uh, another issue is uh, bootloaders. So it's the equivalent of the BIOS and GRUB in one binary, basically. Uh, so this is typically signed. It means that the manufacturer of the device uh, burn the hash of a key inside the, the system on the chip, inside this one. And then in, when loading the bootloader from an external media like SD card or EMMC, it will check the signatures. So in most smartphones, maybe five or 10, it's not the case, but in most of them it's signed. So it's a, good, it's a big issue for us. And for instance, on many of them, it's also load a second operating system alongside the Android distribution. So it's in a zone called Trust Zone. It's like you have a user space, kernel space, and Trust Zone. So you have another OS running on the same CPU with more hardware privileges. So this is not good either. And since we are based on Android, and yeah, it, the code is huge, and sometimes upstream adds features that we don't want, like I don't know. Uh, I think it's line address that added a feature where uh, if you want to, if you have a call, it will look up the phone number that call you in uh, through uh, services online. So it will send the number you call or that are calling you through a service, uh, like reverse uh, name lookup, something like that. So yeah, we have to find these and remove these also. So uh, if you have a tablet without modem, obviously uh, you don't have the issue of the modem. And on the device we support, we added recently a feature to like disable the modem by not loading the modem operating system, since it's up to us to load it in that kind of architecture in the phone we support. We have control of it, over it, so we can decide not to do it. So obviously you don't have call and things like that, mm, at least not through the modem if you do it. So for instance, if we look at Lineage OS, Lineage it's the upstream we are currently based off. So the modem on some device can take the control of the full system. You have like non-free libraries that talk to the hardware. Like uh, for instance, to make the modem work, you have a library that stocks the, that implement the modem protocol. And some you know, backdoor was found, for instance, in uh, in, the, in one for some Samsung devices. So we didn't implement the backdoor, for instance, in that case. And yeah, you, you have the anti-features I talked about. Uh, but uh, all the hardware works, for instance, we don't have GPS working on any of the devices we support. So you have trade-off in both cases. Uh, so this is for stock, stock device you buy off the shelf. So you might have an Android that's um, fully non-free, but the Linux kernel, thanks to the license. The manufacturer is, uh, like, is, uh, needs to release the source code to the people that buy the devices. Um, so in some cases, like users are completely, completely locked out of the devices. If you buy through an operator or the device is linked to an operator, you cannot even like uh, root it uh, or install another operating system on it. Uh, so, yeah, and sometimes you have like even like unwanted applications, spying application being already pre-installed and things like that. But you still left with the ability to install the soft the application you want, like F Droid or other free software application, for instance. So it's not as bad as an iPhone for for Android, for instance. So yeah, and this is why uh, there is a code like that. And yeah, we also had like we also have more surveillance than USSR today. So yeah. So uh, why we are based on Android? Uh, the thing is that the graphical user interface uh, it works with devices that uh, don't have a keyboard, have a small screen with high pixel density, and work with a capacitive display and that works with big fingers. So you need to adapt all the OS, the graphical interface, and the application for that. And that's already done for Android. For GNU Linux, I think it's a work in progress right now. So yeah. And the issue is that, uh, as I said, a uh, huge code base. And Android is meant to run proprietary software, not to empower users. So that's not really aligned with our goals here, but yeah. 
And some of the architecture is way better on GNU Linux, like their package manager and like uh, the build system are better or things like that. So yeah. Uh, so this is uh, what we are currently working on right now. So we are porting like Replicant to Android 9. It's a lot of work. There will be a talk uh, about this uh, tomorrow on uh, making a smartphone sustainable and Replicant sustainable. So we are using like mainline kernel or kernel based on uh, mainline Linux for that. So it's a huge change. Uh, we will try to support like Pinephone and LibreM5, but this is like uh, best effort. Like if people show up to do it and have the time, it will be done. But we are very interested into doing it. And we're also working in a new release. We have to like fix bug, like some SIM card are not recognized, and uh, application compatibility. We are being, f we are fixing it because we don't have like 3D acceleration right now. So uh, the OpenGL we used was incomplete. So this is being fixed. Uh, so we have freedom issue like uh, FDroid, the all all the things that are in FDroid are not necessarily compliant with uh, GNU and FSF distribution guidelines. So we have to fix that. We have uh, also a talk on uh, issue with WebView and the build system at the CCC also here. We are also working on uh, understanding if it's possible to get like free software bootloaders on the device we already support, like Galaxy S3. But uh, yeah, it's difficult to know. So there is a project called Xboot, which has, uh, which claims to be able to run as first stage bootloader. Uh, so we need to see if we can execute code and if code is running on the device we support. So we don't have any conclusive answer yet. And as many other projects, we also have the work to do uh, for presentation, documentation, infrastructure, because we run our part of our own infrastructure and want to run more. So yeah, that's it. Is there any question or time left for questions? Ah, five minutes for questions. Any questions? Hmm. Yeah, uh, maybe next speaker if there are no questions. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. Give Denise a hand. Exit stage right, that's all right, okay.